Hello out there, everybody. I want to share some words with you today. Hope everybody's doing well, and I hope everybody is blessed of the Lord and growing and uh, nurturing a, a close walk with the Lord to the best of your ability. It's one of the most important things that you and I can have today is a, is a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to share a few words of truth out of the scriptures. Um, Bible teaching is so important to our faith because it, it shows us uh, what we can base our faith on. We base our faith on truth. And, uh, and we find truth in the Bible. We, we don't want to base our faith or our um, concept of God on people's opinions or people's ideas or even what people are saying about God. But we want to be able to open our, our Bible ourselves. We want to be able to see what the scriptures actually say. And I want to encourage everyone to study their Bible um, and, to, and to look into it for yourself because the scriptures will reveal to you um, God's plan. Um, and the subject I want to say just a few words today um, about is the, the resurrection of the dead. You'll find that mentioned over in um, Hebrews 6, the second verse, talks about the, the teaching of the resurrection of the dead. And this is a really big subject. It's got a lot of different parts to it. And I'm just going to be dealing with one one part of it because it would take quite a while to cover the whole thing. I'll probably put out a few more videos on this same subject. But one one of the main parts of it, um, when you when you hear the word resurrection of the of the dead, it, you know, a lot of times in the Bible, the the language of the Bible gets people to be thinking. Um, about mystical things or mysterious things, but there's a very practical um, application of the scriptures and there's a very easy and very understandable way to explain the Bible without getting your, your, your thoughts just way out there in, um, in another realm. Uh, the, the word of God was given to us to be understood. The Lord does not want us to just be blindly believing in something that we can't understand, but that's why we have the Bible today. So the subject of the resurrection of the dead, and I want to start in John 3.13. Um, what this subject really has to do with is uh, the way that you and I attain to uh, eternal life. We start off our walk with God really as a, a spiritually dead person because uh, we were all born in Adam. In, in 1 Corinthians 15, it says that in Adam all die, but in Christ all shall be made alive. So resurrection, just to plainly define it, means to come out of a dead condition into a live condition. And that doesn't necessarily just mean a physically dead person in the grave, even though we're going to show some of that in the scriptures today. But a dead condition is where you're just an ungodly uh, person living by your own ideas, your own intelligence. You have no awareness of God. You have no... Um, you have no relationship with the Lord. You've never been converted. You've never spoken the name of Jesus. And you've never had any kind of an encounter with the Lord. Uh, as far as spiritual life is concerned, you're, you're without life. You're dead. You're dead in Adam. That's why that leads into the subject of being born again and what it means to be born again. And why it's necessary for you and I to be born again. We have to be born of the Spirit to actually get spiritual life inside of us. And this subject is going to point that way. So in John 3.13, uh, I want to start off with this verse. Turn there. I hope you all have your Bibles with you. Um, he says, No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So Jesus Christ here saying that, at the time that this gospel, the gospel of John was written, he's saying, Jesus is saying, no man, nobody 
in all the history of the world up to this point has made it up to heaven where God is. God dwells in uh, what the Bible calls the heaven of heavens. There's multiple heavens talked about in the Bible, um, and we'll cover that subject in another video. Uh, but the, the Bible talks about three heavens. Um, talks about the first heaven, and uh, without getting sidetracked, the first heaven it talks about in Revelations 21, and then it talks about third heaven in uh, 2 Corinthians 12. Paul mentions that. So there's multiple heavens. God dwells in a, a realm or a place uh, where, you know, where you would think the angels are they don't have physical bodies um but he's saying in this verse that no one has ascended up to heaven where god is except for jesus christ which came down from heaven he came down from heaven for a specific purpose and that's where i want to lead with this um with this subject all those old testament saints that lived up to the point of that, this being written, the Gospel of John, the New Testament times, all of those Old Testament saints, no matter how close they were to God, all the prophets, um, all the kings, David, uh, Solomon, all of all of these, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they all went to the grave. Nobody went to heaven where God is, the heaven where God is up to this point because jesus said it right here no man has ascended except for myself which has come down from heaven to really <laughs> really what what he could have gone on to say is what what it says in john 14 6 where he says i'm the way the truth and the life he part of that what he meant is i'm the way to get to heaven <laughs> you, you need to follow me to get back up to heaven uh, but up until this time, uh, there was no one who had um, had made it into heaven where God is. And I want to go to Isaiah 26 just to show that um, the prophets and the saints in the Old Testament believed in a physical uh, resurrection. They believed in there was, that there was going to be a time in the future where they were going to come physically come out of the graves and be able to receive what they needed there was something that was not available in the old testament that was made available in the new testament and these old testament prophets believed in that and uh we're going to go to hebrews 11 in a couple minutes but in Hebrews 11, it says that they died in faith, not having received the promise. So they died reaching forward to a promise that was not yet available. So in Isaiah 26, and, and I'm just going to show a couple verses here. Isaiah 26 and 19, he says, Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Now remember this verse. Because this verse specifically ties directly into Matthew 27, verses 50 to 53. I want to encourage people to uh, learn how to or find somebody that can show you how to dovetail the scriptures together. The scriptures were meant to link together. There's keys in the scriptures that unlock other scriptures. The scriptures interpret themselves. You just have to know where to put them together. You have to learn where to put them together. And, and nobody can can really uh, learn that without the gift of the Holy Ghost working in our in our minds and our hearts. Our, our little intelligence, I don't care how long you have studied the Bible, how many times you've read through the Bible, you need the quickening of God's Spirit in your in your heart and in your mind 
to be able to help you to understand his word. So hold on to this in your memory, Isaiah 26, 19. The earth shall cast out the dead. Um, and then we're going to go to a couple places in Job. Job 14 and uh, let's see, where is it at? Job 14 and 13. Uh, 13 and 14. Well, we'll read 12 too. Job 14, 12 to 14. He says, So man lieth down and riseth not. He's talking about physical death. Till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. He's talking about the times of the Old Testament. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. That is a weird statement. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. That thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. That's a key phrase, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. This is Job speaking, remember. And then in the 14th verse, he said, if a man die, shall he live again? That's a question. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. So these Old Testament saints, they knew something was coming. They didn't know what it was. They didn't know how it was going to happen. But they died in a, in a condition where they were reaching for something. And then let's look at Job 19, 25 to 27. Job 19, 25 to 27. He says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Remember that, at the latter day. In Job 14, he said, at the, at the, at the set time, at the time appointed. And then here, he's referring to the latter day. He shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though, in verse 26, after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh, or in this body, shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, in the 27th verse, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. So he's saying that even though I'm physically facing death, I'm going to physically die. My body's going to die. My body's going to decompose, basically. But I'm still looking forward to a time where I'm going to see God face to face. I'm going to see he was looking ahead in time at what we're going to talk about next in, in Matthew 27, 50. He was looking ahead to an appointed time that they that these Jews believed in. They believed that God was going to do something for them. That was not a, a, the key here, is that what they were looking for was not available under the Old Testament. It was not, it was not made available by God yet. So finally, let's look at Matthew 27 and 50. <clears throat> this is a key uh, scripture to this subject. And we're going to read verses 50 to 53. Matthew 27, 50 to 53. Talking about Jesus' death on the cross here. It says, Jesus, in verse 50, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Now, verse 52, you got to pay special attention to. Remember what those scriptures from Isaiah and Job said. Talking about an appointed time, a set time, when he would remember me. Verse 52 says that the graves were opened. 
and many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose. Many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose. Verse 53, and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So with Jesus dying on the cross, being buried in the grave for three days, and then finally resurrecting out of the grave, he wasn't the only one that came out of the grave, according to these scriptures. There was others who had died, not yet having received the promise. They came out of the grave into a place where they could receive what God had for them. You, you, I would say that they received what they needed to make the next step in their relationship with the Lord. So let's look at, so let's see, verse 53. He says, they went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So let's look at Luke 24. Remember, the scriptures interpret themselves. We just have to know how to link them together. <clears throat> this is Jesus talking to the disciples here um, after, his, um, after his crucifixion and his resurrection. It, he says in Luke 24, 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but, Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Remember what it said. Those Old Testament saints in Matthew 27, 53. It said they went into the holy city. I don't know how they knew. But somehow they knew they needed to be in Jerusalem at that specific time. I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. So there was something that was going to happen in the city of Jerusalem. They were looking forward. Jesus was telling them, hey, I'm going to do something for you that's never been done for mankind before. I'm going to give you something that you that is absolutely vital and necessary for you to attain to eternal life. Now let's... Um, Let's come over to 1 Corinthians 15. Oops. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 6. Uh, we could read verse 5 too. It says that, um, this is talking about after Jesus' resurrection. It says that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after he rose from the grave. Uh, and then in verse 6, after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain until this present, but some are fallen asleep. <laughs> And when it talks about falling asleep, he's talking about dying. Um, but this 500 brethren is the same group in Matthew 27, verses 50 to 53, that came out of the grave to receive the promise on the day of Pentecost. They, they were Old Testament saints, and we're going to go to Hebrews 11 here. Old Testament saints that came out of the grave to receive that promise. That's what Isaiah 26 is talking about. That's what Job 14 and Job 19 are talking about. So let's go to Hebrews 11. This is a very important uh, uh, part of this subject of the resurrection of the dead. Why did these 500 plus people have to come out of the grave with Jesus why did they need to do that? And what was the purpose of that happening? Um, some people believe that all these Old Testament people, when they die, they just go right to heaven. Well, the scriptures don't support that idea. They had to 
sleep for 500 to 1,000 years in the grave, that one scripture said, hide me in the grave until my set time, they had to come out to receive um, that gift that was going to be poured out on the day of Pentecost. So in Hebrews 11, um, he mentions a, quite a few Old Testament saints. So he mentions Abel, he mentions Enoch, let me see, he mentions Noah, Abraham, um, Sarah, uh, let's see, uh, Isaac, Jacob, Esau, uh, Joseph, Moses, let's see, just skipping down through here, this is of course not mentioning 500 people, but you can get the idea. Um, he mentions Rahab, uh, he mentions Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets. Um, so he mentions quite a few people in Hebrews 11. Now look at verse 13. And this is defining why these people needed to come out of the grave with Jesus. It says these all died in faith. They all went to the grave in faith. Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, 500 years later, and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They, they, they looked ahead in time, as I was just saying. They looked ahead in time and saw that something was coming that they needed. They needed a, a very special gift that was going to be poured out on the day of Pentecost, which is one of the major reasons why Jesus came. He lived. He died. He was buried, he resurrected, he ascended, and then he poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost to give us what one of the ingredients we needed to go on to inherit eternal life. That Holy Ghost is a, the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues is a, it's, it's a, it's a spiritual connection a heavenly connection, uh, a, a bond of a relationship between mankind and his God, his creator, the creator and the creation, that bond that was broken by Adam in the garden because of Adam's disobedience, that relationship was severed. Jesus came to rejoin you and I back to God. And that is the bond of that right here. You see my hands going together. The bond of that or the connection is through the gift of the Holy Ghost that is uh, made available to you and I. But before the day of Pentecost, that was not available. So these men had to wait 500 to 1,000 years to be able to receive that wonderful blessed gift. Um, so let's look at um, Hebrews 7, 19, he says, For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by which we draw nigh unto God, or by that better hope or that promise, we're able to be reconnected to God. When he says, For the law made nothing perfect, uh, when he's when he's referring to the law, he's talking about the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, the Law of Moses. Um, that period of time is what he's referring to. It didn't make anything perfect, but he mentions the bringing in of a better hope. That better hope was brought to you and I by Jesus Christ and by his pouring out of his life and then finally pouring out the gift on the day of Pentecost. Um, so let's look at, let's look at Acts 2, uh, 
and all of these Old Testament saints, I've probably said this 40 times already, but all these Old Testament saints had to come out of the grave to receive this gift, because without this gift, this promise, you and I, including them, couldn't go on to that better hope. This baptism of the Holy Ghost talked about in the book of Acts is an absolute essential part of our journey with God, and it's an absolute necessity to get it in the evidence of getting the baptism of the Holy Ghost is always the gift of speaking in tongues. It's always the evidence of it. Um, that's, that's the evidence that you've made that connection. And this does not happen. A lot of people think that you get this gift at the point of your conversion where you accept Jesus' death for you and his atonement for your sins that are past uh, his sacrifice for your sins when he died on the cross, that you get this gift at the point of your conversion, but that's not it. Um, Acts 19 talks about people who had been converted, but they had not received that, that secondary operation of receiving that gift. So Acts 2.33, um, Let's read 32 as well. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which you now see and hear. So the promise of the Holy Ghost. Remember Hebrews 11, these all died in faith, not having received the promise, okay? And now Acts 2.33, if you dovetail that together, it's the, the answer to what that promise is, is the gift of the Holy Ghost here in Acts 2.33. And then we could also um, look at John 7. Uh, let's see here. think it's <clears throat> John 7 38 he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water he's talking about uh, coming forth uh, the evidence of speaking in tongues flowing out of you audibly like rivers of living water and then he defines that in verse 39. This spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given. This is prior to the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus had to live, die, and resurrect to finally go back to the Father and for the Father to pour out that promise through his Son, Jesus Christ, to give mankind access so we could be joined to the Lord again. We could be joined to God the Father, which is should be obvious that it's an absolute essential step of our journey and our salvation. Um one more scripture in Ephesians 2, and I think it's the 18th verse. He says, through him we both have access, access by one spirit unto the Father. Without the Spirit of God, the gift of the Holy Ghost, you don't have access. That Holy Ghost gives us access to what Adam lost. And that is a part of you and I being born again, to be, to be born of God. Um, John 3 says that you must be born of water and the Spirit to enter into the kingdom of God. So I'm going to stop right there. Um, but this is an important part of this subject. The resurrection of the dead, why those Old Testament worthy saints had to come out. Um, had to come out of the grave and hang, hang around in Jerusalem 
until that moment, until that time when God poured out the gift, when Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and the 11 stood with him. Um, there was, I think it says on that first day, there was 3,000 people there listening and able to hear what Peter was saying. And this 500 plus people of that 3,000 was these Old Testament saints that came out of the grave to receive that gift of the Holy Ghost. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, um, Moses were all there at that time. If you believe what these scriptures are saying to us today, the way that they're tying together, I hope you can see that. So I'm going to stop. God bless you. This is an incredibly important subject, and I will say some more about it in further videos, but uh, keep striving, keep fighting the good fight of faith, and God bless you and your family.